Okay, um, so let's talk about some of those different, you know, patch methodologies. You know, how do, how do we how do we deal with all this? Um, and uh, basically, what we do is is we start with kind of a, a default policy, and then we've added like another possibility might be a pioneer policy. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, you know, having separate workstation and server um, policies. Again, these are all the patch policies that we deal with. And then um, the last one that we could do is uh, we, we talk about uh, our second to last patching laptops and then also, um, you know, different schedules for servers. All right. So we're going to talk about those real quick. So first one is the default policy. I mean, basically in, in, in K2 and SAS, you should have what's called the default master policy. Now, some of you that have been with us for a while, there might have been the old, and, and those of you that are on our, our, our version 5 servers, you see like a, a policy dealing with office. Um, no office service packs, um, office updates, but no service packs, and then nothing. All right, those were the three choices. And, you know, we tried to duplicate that when we moved over to, to K2 and SAS, but we really realized that because you were having to do some of the patch approvals, it was really just complicated. Honestly, it was even complicated in the other world. Uh, we've been doing this for so long that we kind of think in the terms of, hey, people had Office 2000 out there and we maybe didn't want to do it, or maybe you're not comfortable pushing Office patches or Office service packs out. But the idea is you really just have one policy and you're going to manage that one policy and you're going to approve the patches that want that go into that policy. So all your machines are in one group. And it really is the simplest way to do it. It's kind of like the, the, the you know, patch 101 and in fact, for most people, it's perfectly okay. And the only time you're going to deviate from that is, is some of these other things that we'll talk about is, you know, if you have like some specialty machines or something that you need to keep a closer eye on. So another way of doing this is what we call a pioneer policy. And we've introduced that in a couple, again, on, on, the, um, on the SaaS platform. Um, and the idea with a pioneer policy is take a subset of your machines. Take, a, you know, a Vista machine from this client and a 7 machine from that client and, you know, this kind of server and that kind of server. Just like 5 or 10% of your, of your overall machines, put them into the Pioneer policy, right? You, you've got a representative sampling of all the different types of machines from all the different customers. And you put them into the Pioneer policy. And then when you go to approve your patches, and, and Jim's going to go over, you know, the steps to approve patches here shortly. Um, you're going to pretty be pretty liberal about approving the Pioneer patches, right? You're just going to kind of go with Microsoft. And the idea is that, hey, if something blows up, which it might, we have pretty good luck with this. You know, it's really pretty rare that Microsoft has problems. But if it does happen, you haven't taken down an entire company. You haven't taken down all your servers at once. And then what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, you're going to wait a week, you're going to apply these patches, you're going to wait a week, and then a week later you're going to have basically take the settings from the Pioneer policy and overwrite the settings on the default policy. You know, we could call it a settler policy, right? You know, the Pioneers kind of pave the way and then the settlers come in behind. Um, so anyway, it's another way of, of dividing the, the risk um, if, you, if you have um, that, a situation like that where you, you don't want to do a lot of lab testing. Um, consider doing this kind of, a, we should call it a guinea pig policy, right? Because that's kind of what it is, the, the guinea pigs for us. All right, so um, another one is uh, just separating out a policy based on whatever you want to do. If you're more comfortable having a policy for workstations and a policy for servers or a policy for SQL servers or, look, whatever makes sense to you. You know, you might have um, a particular uh, line of business application and, you know, you may want to set up a patch policy for just that particular um, line of business so that you don't accidentally apply, you know, the patch, you know, maybe there's some patches that can't go on those machines and you want to, you know, kind of group them together because you've got a bunch of them. If it's just one of them, you'll go deny it on that one machine. But if it's a bunch of them, you could certainly set up different, um, different machines. So this could be done based any, any way you want. Now, in the, in the K2 server and the version 5 service for us, you really don't have the rights to, to change this stuff. You can do it. You've always been able to do it, but it involves you taking over patch management completely. Um, approving patches has been a service that we've been able to offer on our own servers, but we can't yet yet offer. I, 
I stress the word yet, um, we hope to someday, on Kaseya's SaaS platform. So um, you have now, to do it yourself. Quick question for you. Sure. Um, the Pioneer policy, um, Jason is asking us if that's going to be available on K2. Uh, do we have that? Well, here's the, the here's the problem on the K2 server, is if I give you access to the Pioneer policy, I have to also give you access to approving your own things, because I can't approve your Pioneer, right, because I don't know your customers. So what we have to do, and in the cases where you want to take over patch management, right, you decide to do that. And I can tell you from experience, there are few people that want this responsibility because you, <laughs> when you see us getting to the end of this thing, you realize, hey, there's a lot of stuff that you got to go through. And poor Jim does this and lives and breathes this, you know, and he has for years. And he's taking his knowledge and he's sharing it with you on the K2 server so you don't have to go through it. But if you want to do it, all you got to do is open up a ticket and say, hey, I want my own patch policies. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create your own little subset. It'll be like, you know, Jason's, um, uh, you know, pioneer policy and Jason's default policy. We're going to put all your machines back into the default. And then we're going to give you rights to make your changes. But we're going to we're going to kind of take our marbles and go home. We're going to take all of our def our default policy and we're going to take it away from you. Because the, unfortunately, the way it works out, is if we give you rights to approve things and we give you the policy, you can then start approving things on the default policy. It's just one of those quirky Kaseya things. So we have to give you, <laughs> we have to give you your think, own policies uh, to get away from it. Okay. I think uh, Jason is happy with Jim. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't blame you. Blame me. We're all happy with Jim. Most, I would say, <laughs> in in you know, we have probably 500 partners that you know we work with. Um, I would guess that less than one percent of them. I mean have ever done patch management in themselves. I mean, I really, I don't think I could count on two hands the number of times I've set it up. Mm. Uh, patching laptops. Now, laptops are a problem, right? We kind of expect laptops to be shut down at night. We think these guys, you know, they're going to take their laptop and go home. They may not even use it at night, but they take it with them just in case. So, you know, we're almost guaranteed that they're not going to be turned on in the middle of the night when we, or after hours when we want to run patching. So one of the ways that we've done this with the templates is we've gone in and we've said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and schedule the patch scans during lunchtime, you know, 12, 1 o'clock, whatever. First of all, the patch scan, I don't think I've ever had anybody complain about a patch scan running on their machine, slowing it down. It, it, I think Microsoft does this to us all the time in the background, so I, I really don't have a problem with it. Um, even applying the patches, let's try to apply the patches like about an hour before they go home, right? In most patches, it shouldn't take that long to apply. So at 4 o'clock, 4.30, let's schedule the patch. Assume they go home at 5 or 5.30 or 6. Uh, you know, give it a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and apply those patches. Now, when the patches are done and the reboot action kicks in, of course it's going to give them a patch nag screen, but chances are it's only going to give them one because it's happening so late in the day, they say no, and then they shut down and they go home, and then the next time it boots up, it finishes applying the patch. And they, you kind of get your reboot in that, in that process. Now, if they're hibernating, we're in trouble, right? They're going to keep getting the nag screens. But at the end of the day, we do get it patched, and they do get nagged. And then you remember, you know, remember to set not to skip if offline. You know, that way, if they are shut down at noon or, you know, at 4 o'clock, then it, it will still do its magic. And when they do boot up, it will, you know, kick in and, and start applying those patches. All right, so that that's kind of the way we've been dealing with um, with laptop scans, uh, is doing them you know during the day, and that's the only thing we try to do during the day. Um, different methodologies for for patching servers, and and you know I've joked in training. I, I I bet if we got eight of you in a room, we'd come up with six different answers on how to patch servers, right? I mean, it's just it's just the nature of being techs. Everybody's got their own way of doing that. Everybody's got their own customers, their own. Uh, level of importance for the server is it mission critical is it just a normal SBS server look guys I you know as long as it works I'm okay with it so a couple you know through the years and training people people have you know suggested different things or I've seen them like when I've gone to review accounts I've seen people do different things and I'm like hey that's a cool idea I got nothing against it so you know one of them is hey let's go ahead and scan the machines every day but instead of patching every day, I'd prefer to patch on the weekend. Say I'm going to patch Sunday morning at 2 a.m., just like we did. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the reboot action in, to reboot immediately. So since we only apply patches once a week, there's no chance that it'll reboot during the week. It'll only reboot after we apply patches. Boom, mission accomplished. 
We've applied our patches. We've rebooted. Done. Okay. Uh, again, I've got nothing really against that. It does kind of limit your ability to get out of band patches. If a patch appears on like a Friday, you know, you'd almost have to manually force it out instead of just approving it. And then because you've got daily and daily, um, you know, patches and daily updates, it would get applied right away. But that's okay. You know, I mean, it doesn't happen very often and you could deal with that. Um, some people I've talked to scan daily, but they patch overnight during the week. And the idea is that they like to reboot their servers early in the morning. So that way, if something goes wrong and that server doesn't come, come up, they're not having to drive in on the weekend or they're not having to be there Monday morning, you know, to, to, to get that server up and running. Somebody's going to be into work in a couple hours and then they can probably talk them through, you know, how to see what's on the screen, see why it didn't reboot and maybe save a trip in. So again, I mean, these are, you know, two other ways of doing it other than uh, the way I've, you know, the, the standard way we do it, which is to reboot Sunday at 2 a.m. Uh, but, you know, if, if you guys have other ideas that have worked well for you just doing this manually, I'm open to all kinds of uh, suggestions and, and, you know, I'll include them in our training and, and you know, maybe even potentially create templates on them or something like that. Okay.